Mr. President, this situation is, and this set of bills, just even this one bill, are so far ranging and so broad to consider that it becomes difficult to know where to even start poking this monster. How do you approach this situation and create a uniform story from beginning to end to define how awful it is when it's impossible to even see all of it in one glance? In the past, Michigan energy policy took years of discussion. And, and was always bipartisan. But all of a sudden, we are racing ahead with this policy. So afraid to have debate in committee, so afraid to have debate even here that, you know, we're jockeying for position in the board. Wouldn't want to, you know, end the discussion with a no vote explanation. Mr. President, there's an old saying about being so heavenly minded as to be no earthly good. And what we're dealing with here has a nice parallel of being so future oriented as to be no present good. We set our sights on some sort of ambitious vision of utopia and of perfecting the world situation that we're going to stop the weather. We're going to stop climate change, about two degrees, in a hundred years. Even though the scientists who recommend that we need to do these things readily admit that the ability to determine a single action taken even corporately by the world's ability to impact something a hundred years from now is exponentially diminishing every year that goes by. It's impossible. But more problematic than that, and the reason why I quip to you that we're so future-oriented as to be no present good, is because we do all of this in the name of the future and disregard the very present moment. The people that are here now the ratepayers, the citizens, those who need food. And we cast that aside because we're saving the planet. And this that we're trying is not even untried. This isn't new. Other states have entered into these ambitious ideals. Other countries have. And we're seeing the consequences of that. It's not new. And Michigan has already stuck its toe in the water. A simple perspective of the historical story of the success of Michigan's energy plans just dating back to the 90s. What happened after we adopted a new plan in the 90s? Well, rapidly increasing rates and bigger and bigger profits for utilities. Ten years later or so, the legislature came, redid our energy plan, created a renewable energy portfolio. What were the results? Higher rates, less production, big strain on transmission, bigger profits for utilities, less reliability. Fast forward to 2016, the last time we did this. What have been the results since then? Well, lo and behold, higher rates, bigger profitability for utilities, less reliability, more strain on transmission. We keep on repeating the same formula. And we're doing the same things. And why? Well, influence in Lansing is certainly a significant part of that. We don't have an honest, free debate about these policies. The influence that is placed within these chambers particularly to drive the agenda from leadership positions and from caucus positions on both sides of the aisle for decades 
is preventing the voices of the people from being heard from the members who come here with nothing in their minds except to represent the needs of their people. Why do we care what DTE wants? Why do we care what consumers wants? Why do we care whoever the group from Wisconsin is now? We don't serve them. They're supposed to serve us. That's why we have a public service commission. That's why they have monopoly rights, because they're supposed to serve us, not us serving them. It's incredibly frustrating, and I know members on that side see it too. They fussed over it when we were in the majority. We have got to stop this crazy merry-go-round ride of letting the utilities take us to the cleaners. Again and again, when will we enact a policy that forces them to be stingy with dollars, forces them to have a little bit of pain in the pocketbook instead of our ratepayers? You know that my rates have more than doubled, and it did it in one month last summer. How is a small dairy farm in the Upper Peninsula supposed to just see a 100% jump in rates in one month time? And what are we doing about it? Oh, great. We're going to put up 260,000 acres of solar panels on farmland. That's brilliant. So when my farming neighbors decide they might as well take the $3,000 an acre that the government subsidized to some solar company to build solar panels next there, and then the farm next to them is like, well, I don't want to deal with that, so I'll take it too. Next thing you know, a farm is totally surrounded by all these solar panels and all the services they depend upon to keep their farm going. The maintenance guys, the dealerships, the other farmers that they need as neighbors, they're all gone. I might as well sell my place too and put solar panels up on it, move to Montana or something. It's ridiculous to think that this is not going to change the entire landscape of this state and critically impact and cripple your food production. Take away 260,000 acres and you're not going to do it to trees. Can't cut them down, that's the carbon sequestration. We're going to stick it to the forestry industry that we just invested a billion dollars in. No more tree cutting. Well, that's a wilderness area. The false claims of cheaper energy. Solar's cheaper, wind's cheaper. I was on the energy committees in the house. I sat through lots of nice dinners with the big utilities, and they put their nice charts up there. Hey, look, wind is so much cheaper now, and it's getting cheaper. Not fair comparisons, though. We don't talk about the incentive dollars that they're getting so they can buy the land out from underneath our feet. And hey, you want to complain about the subsidies the other ones get? I'm right there with you. It's not right either. That's why I mentioned in my earlier speech today, we call it cheaper because the rates don't go up as rapidly as they might have. Meanwhile, we take more money out of your pocketbook and taxes and give it back to the utilities some other way. Oh, here, have some free light bulbs. Where are we going to grow our food? The people of this state need us to focus on three things when it comes to energy. Lower rates, reliability, and not having to compete against government mandates and funding for things like land, work, profitability, access, and freedom in general. And this bill does nothing to address those three things. In fact, it works counter to them. And then we couldn't even get some consideration for the Upper Peninsula situation, where our weather, I know I heard one of my colleagues earlier, and he's on my side, so I'll get him later, but to say, you know, hey, we've got a beautiful peninsula here. Yeah, well, thanks a lot for forgetting about the other one. You're all happy to say it's beautiful when you like to come visit. Meanwhile, one of the other colleagues mentions mining, 
And well, it just poof, disappeared. Well, it hasn't disappeared. It's still there. It's still the bedrock of what we do there. And this plan just takes the mining company, our big employer, our big rate payer, our big stability in the whole energy market, and says, yeah, all that work you guys did before, let's see you do it again. No consideration. The time has come to look seriously at why we're on this merry-go-round of energy why our state is such an incredible outlier in the energy picture. Why it is that our big utilities do choice in other states, but then when we talk about choice here, oh my goodness, that would be the end of ends. It will never work. And we let them tell us that. We let them spin us again. We have to try and look at this, not from the perspective of a hundred years from now. It's not that I don't care about a hundred years from now. I want my grandchildren to have a great place, or my great-grandchildren, I suppose, because I'm old now. But I got to think about the people that are here right now. My young son, 15 years old, comes to me and says, Dad, I want to grow this farm. I want to expand the amount of cows that we have. First thing my dad tells him, how are you going to feed them? Where are we going to get more land? And now here we are making that even harder. Tell my son, well, sorry son, that dream's going to have to be out the window unless we move to Canada. Eh? Which we don't say in the UP the way they do in Canada, just so you're sure. We have to do better if we really are serious about growing this state economically, population-wise, industry-wise. I mean, after all, all this green energy and EV cars are going to take mining. We've got the copper, we've got the iron, but yet, poof, mining's gone, apparently. Well, yeah, I wonder why. All these policies, all these ideas, regulations, and higher energy costs. Energy costs are the number one reason why a business does or doesn't come. The number one reason. We talk about talent, we talk about education. They can get that, they can build that, but if there's not energy, they can't be there. We have to do better than this bill, this group of bills today. I ask for a no vote.